is our desire to trust you new, O oh God, all the time. Thank you for this morning. Thank you for the gift of life. And thank you for bringing all of us this morning into your presence, O oh God. We surrender our lives to you this day, O oh God. May you open our hearts to receive from you, O oh God, and open our eyes to see you, O oh God. We thank you for this, your children who are gathered, and for our friends online, Lord, we pray that may you minister to them. Minister to all of us, O oh God. We thank you and we bless your holy name. For all the ministers, Lord, we are grateful. We pray for special anointing upon all the ministers this morning, O oh God. In a special way, Lord, we commit the preacher to you. We pray that, Lord, may you anoint him more and more and use him, O oh Father, King of glory, to bring forth your word to us this morning for the glory and honor of your great name. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, we pray. Amen and amen. Let's clap our hands to the Lord. Thank you very much. You are all very welcome. Just turn to your neighbor, welcome your neighbor, so that your neighbor will be comfortable and will be happy in the presence of God. Amen. It's a joy to see all of you this morning, and we are here once again in the presence of our Father, our Creator, our Savior, our Provider, and everything. Amen. So may God minister to us as we gather. Brothers and sisters, we have come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer Him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive His holy word, to bring before Him the needs of the world, to ask His forgiveness of our sins, and to seek His grace, that through His Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to His service. First John chapter 1, from verses 8 and 9, says... If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. But if we confess our sins to Almighty God, He is faithful and just. He will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There is no sin that God cannot forgive. You may be seated, reflect on your personal life as we come before the Lord this morning. And ask the Lord to forgive you, even as we present our request before Him. He's ready to answer us. In the same way, we shall continue with a general confessional prayer together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men in thoughts, word, and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May the Almighty God who forgives all who truly repent have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The collect of the day. Today is the first Sunday of Epiphany. We shall all join and pray together the collect. Together. Oh God, who knows how to be set in the midst of many and great dangers that by the reason of virality of our nature, we cannot always stand upright, grant to her such strength and protection as in all dangers and carry us through all temptation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Oh Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. May we arise and join to say the short form of glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and forever. 
and ever. Amen. Once again, you're very welcome, and we are blessed to have this great team before us. Let's welcome them. Let's clap our hands as we join them. May the Lord bless you as we continue. Praise, praise the Lord. Uh, who is happy to be in the house of the Lord? That's awesome. So we're going to praise him like we mean it. Eh? In the same energy we raised our hands. Amen. All right. Baraka, 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 Baraka,
The Bible says in the book of Psalms 130 that I wait on the Lord. I wait on His word. Lord, we wait on you. Wait on your word, Lord. When life is suffocating, Lord, when we are exasperated by this sinful flesh, we will wait on your word, Lord. Master King of Glory, we praise your name for the opportunity to worship you this morning. 
You are God who is destined to live forever, and you are the Lord who understands desire and the zeal of our hearts. We are here before you knowing that, Lord, you are the great I am, the ancient of days, and the bright morning star. We praise you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Father, this morning we bring before you our country, Uganda, Lord. We pray, Father, while thanking you, Lord, for the peace, the absence of conflict and wars in our country, Lord. We thank you, Father, King of glory, for the stable leadership, Lord, in this country. We thank you for our President, Jeremy Seven, Lord, and those who help him, Lord, to manage the affairs of this country, Lord. We thank you for the entire executive. We thank you, Lord, for the legislature and the judiciary, Master King of Glory, the various arms of the governments, Lord. And it's our prayer, Lord, that you will guide these, Lord, who are in charge of your business in this country, Lord. May you guide them in the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, that they may guide this country in the right direction. In the name of Jesus, in areas where our country, Lord, is struggling, Lord. We pray, Father, for divine intervention, Lord, as our King. May you heal our economy, Lord, especially in the season when our economy is limping. May you, the good Lord, be a source of our hope, Master, in the name of Jesus, Lord. There are many people who are jobless, Lord, but we pray that you will open doors, Lord, where people don't even expect those to exist. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Father, we pray that you forgive us as a country, Lord, especially in areas where innocent people are killed, Lord. There are people who are dying, Lord, innocently, Lord. But God, we pray that your justice will prevail in the name of Jesus, Lord. There are properties that are being grabbed by the giants of this world. But we pray, Father, that you will prove yourself faithful for these vulnerable people, Master. In the name of Jesus, you will defend our cause, Lord, and show that you are fully in control. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for the church of Christ. This is the church that the Lord Christ Jesus died for. This is the church that you desire and you want this church to be the true light and the salt of the heart. Father, this is the church that you desire, Lord, that should serve as the conscience of the society, Lord. Father, we pray that you, in your power as God, may you preserve your own church in the name of Jesus, the true body of believers, Lord. People who are living to serve your purpose, Lord, in this life. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. We pray, Father, that the every gates that the enemy may open, Lord, the gates of hell against you, church master, be closed down by fire. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray Lord, that through your activities in heaven, you will frustrate all the works of the devil against your church in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we bring before you our archbishop, the bishops, and the entire clergy. We pray, Father, that you will use these your servants, Lord, to serve your purpose, Lord, among these people whom you have Bless them, Lord, to minister to. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Father, that this called your servants, Lord, will be people of integrity, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray that, Lord, these servants who are called by your name would be people who would be guided by your word, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. We pray, Father, that you continue to watch over them, Lord, and let your perfect will for each and every one of them come to pass. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Father, we bring before you our dear chaplain, Lord, who is in charge of your business in this chaplaincy in this season, that you will use that together with the entire team, Lord, in this season, to bless your name in this place, in the mighty name of Jesus. I bring before you, Lord, the entire members, Lord, in the congregation, Lord, that you, the good Lord, will watch over each and every one of them, Master King of glory. May you intervene in their lives, Master, in the name of Jesus, and change their status quo, in the mighty name of Jesus, those who are wrestling with various kind of diseases and sickness. May you, Jehovah Rapha, have your way in their situations and change their story that they may see your goodness in the land of the living. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray 
for Makere University. We thank you for this great university. We thank you for the achievements, Lord, that have, have been uh, rejected, Lord, for all this time, Master, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the entire leadership of this great university. We thank you for the, ta uh, the, the staffs, Lord, the academic and non-academic staffs. We thank you for the student fraternity. In the name of Jesus, we pray that you'll use them to fulfill the purpose for which you have Cause them to be in this great institution in this season so that your name may be glorified. Father, even as we continue with our service, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity, Lord, that you have given us, Lord, to hear your word this day, Lord, through your servant, the special verse, Lord, who is going to bring your word unto us. We pray that you'll use him, Lord, to bring your message with clarity and power, the message that will transform our lives, Lord, and cause us to walk according to your will. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. And we know you have heard our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let's sit. Time for the ministry of the word. Praise the Lord, church. Uh, the first reading is taken from the book of Isaiah uh, 59, 9 to 13. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 9 to 13. And it says, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and return, not thither but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to, be empty, to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and prosper in the thing for which I sent. For you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and, and the hills before you shall break forth into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn, instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar, shall come up the matto, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign which shall not be cut off. The word of the Lord. Good morning, church. Our second reading is from John chapter 10, from verse 1. And the heading reads, Jesus, the true shepherd. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheep fold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. Verse 2 reads, but he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To whom the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Verse 4 reads, and when he, brings, when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. Verse 5, yet they will by no means follow a stranger but will free from him for they do not know the voice of strangers. This is the word of God. Shall we please all arise to our feet and boldly confess what we believe in, the words of the Apostles' Creed. Facing the holy table. We shall project. I believe in God, 
the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He ascended to the hill. On the third day, he, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Before sitting, please turn to around five people and welcome them in the presence of the Lord. Don't forget your smile. Wear that smile as you welcome God's people, your brothers and sisters in the presence of the Lord. If no one welcomed you, please put up your hand. Or if your neighbor is not smiling as they are welcoming you, very annoyed, please put up your hand. You are. <laughs> please, you may be seated. And our friends online, we welcome you so much in the presence of the Lord. We love you and love you and love you dearly. You are welcome. Are you happy to be in the presence of the Lord? God is good. And all the time. Wow. There is no better place to be than in the house of the Lord. And on this note, we want to welcome those who are worshiping with us for the very first time. You are a visitor. Just put up your hand so we can welcome you. Wow. Welcome. 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 Thank you so much for worshiping with us. Please keep your hand up there. We have a visitor's card and make sure you get it. We want to know more about you. Our visitors, leave the hands up. And our wonderful ushers will be giving you the visitor's card. You are welcome. You have a church where you fellowship. Please don't hesitate when you go back to send our regards and thank them for the wonderful job that they do. But if you are looking for a church, do you know what? This can be your church. That can be your permanent seat because Jesus resides here. So you are welcome. Praise the Lord. We want to welcome all the professors, we want to welcome all the lecturers and all our brothers online, feel at home, feel at peace in the presence of the Lord. And our dear students, we want to welcome you, you're very dear and special to us. We know this semester is a little bit unique, it is a semester for the guild campaigns and elections, please we are praying for you, okay? There'll be some noise, don't be a part of any you know, destructive habits or behavior. Let's do this God's way. And I want to challenge you, our dear students, don't fear these positions, okay? Don't fear the positions. Go ahead and let your name be nominated. Let's influence because we are called to be the light in this dark world, okay? Please do not. And we know that this week, graduation is on starting tomorrow. We are praying. We are trusting God that all will be. All will be well. We are praying and we are trusting God that all will be. Sorry about that interruption. We are praying and trusting God that all will be well. Hallelujah. Now help me turn to your neighbor and ask your neighbor if they came with a visitor. They invited someone. Hmm? You know, good, thi <laughs> good things are found in the presence of God. So if they did not, just look them into the eye and say, make sure next Sunday you invite someone. <laughs> Comfort, yes. Make sure next Sunday you invite, because good things are found in the presence of God. So if you don't invite someone, you're really cheating them of what God is doing. We want to welcome you, my dear friend and our elder, Canon Dr. Ruth. You are welcome. Please stand up. You're welcome. And thank you for coming to escort uh, your husband, our elder. Thank you so much. But just to let all our graduating students, we have those who are graduating this week. Good. Wow. We are so proud of you. Wow. Finally. Hallelujah. Do you know what is going to happen next Sunday? Next Sunday, we are in the 11 o'clock service. Please come in your gown. Mm -hmm. We're going to pray for you, commission you, so that when you hit the market space, the favor of God is upon you. 
And do you know what will happen after that? We are going to have a big cake out there and cut the big cake and celebrate. Yes, Faith is saying, are you sure? Yes. <laughs> yes, so yes, we're going to have a good time in the presence of God. Last Sunday, we introduced something we called the Youth Connection. And by God's grace, we prayed for the students who are starting their semester. We want to do that every semester. And every end of the month, I will always be with the youth. So that we train these young people to love the Lord at a tender age. We are privileged today to have our ministers with us. Please let's appreciate the reverends that are here with us. We shall know more about Reverend Barnett. And then Reverend Scovia is around. And of course, my coolest dude. <laughs> yes, John is around. John, we welcome you. The Vajas, we welcome all of you. We are privileged today to have an elder who is coming to bring God's word. I'll come later and bring the notices, but because of the streaming, we always do the sermon before the notices. So we are privileged today to have an elder, a dear friend of ours, a former vice chancellor who, and a minister in Church of Uganda is here to come and bring God's word. But before I tell you what he's going to talk about, just help me turn to your neighbor and remind your neighbor of the theme of the year. Remind your neighbor. Mm -hmm. Some of you don't want even to look at your neighbors because you are guilty. Aha, uh -huh, I've got you. Make sure you take to heart this theme. All the topics we have are guiding us to achieve this theme. And we want to be so intentional. So now that your neighbor has reminded you, let's say it together. One, two, three. Conforming to the truth of God's word for trans guilt. But I caught you, you didn't have it. <laughs> but God loves you and we love you all. Yes, that is the theme that is guiding us. That is it. Thank you so much. But today we have an interesting theme. Generally, God has been speaking to us from the start. The theme exposition was so done well by God's grace. Uh, John did, my husband. Then the following Sunday, we talked about the supremacy of God's word. And Canon Nyegenye did an amazing job. And the third Sunday, I came in to talk about discovering our purpose through God's word. And then later in the third service, uh, Bishop Luarida came in. And today, we are talking about divine guidance through God's word. Divine guidance. We need that. And that's none other than the one who's bringing it today, Reverend Canon Dr. John Senyonyi, is bringing God's word to us. Before he comes, let's receive the drama team. Our friends online, get your Bibles. Let's dive in God's word. Let's receive the drama team. Praise the Lord. I'm going to organize this place. Oh, this here. This here. Bad girl. Oh, oh hi. You're welcome. You. Hi. I'm okay. You're welcome. Home? home is good. Yeah. I'm here organizing. That is a good thing. Yeah. <clears throat> so the environment is okay? Yeah. What are you hiding? Where? Oh, yeah. Behind you. <laughs> Which side? Yeah. <laughs> what is this girl. now? Come, I'll show you. <laughs> what? I told you when Hi. I start loving you, eh? Hi. Uh, yeah, I will not stop. Oh, my God. So I've been tired of you squeezing my juice with your hands. So I got you a blender. Thank you very much. You remember the purpose? Yes. The, uh, the fashion fruit, oranges I brought yesterday, go and wash them. I must. Wash them. One minute, just one sure minute. <laughs> that I make this thing. I'm happy. Now, this thing. Uh, Do you know what? I'm done. Let's just go and make juice. You are done? Yes. I'm also almost finishing here. You're still... 
This one has to be like this. Huh? Which one? Like that. And this, you first put that Baker, one. have you finished washing them? Yes, I am done. Yes. You go and wash them again. I'm coming. I am <laughs> coming, okay? You let me handle No, this. that is not done like that. Mm. I've made juice for over how many years? You have made juice for how long? You have been making juice with your... Baby, you are going to break my blender, okay? Cut, when did it start it becoming blender. your blender? It's our blender. Is it your blender? Yes. It's, our, it's ours. It is our blender from where? It is me who went with my money I bought the blender. Let me put the blender. You wash the passion fruits. But Victor... Look at yourself. You've started even you saying your what? money, yet Let it's our you. money. Uh, uh, I am an engineer, me. okay? My parents paid school fees. This is the detonator. This one goes here. You think I don't know how to So how are we going to put the fruit? The problem you come from poor families. You don't see these things, okay? <laughs> now you are excited because you are seeing new things. Go do your work. Wash the pineapples. Let me tell you, hon. You can have money to buy this, but I have the brains. Bring. The ah, problem so you don't want to me, understand. Have, me who went, me, hmm? and I thought, oh, she's squeezing with her. Ah, I don't have brains. Ah, let me take my brain. You back. do not. Please, pack first. Park my blender. But it's ours. Why are you saying your blender? From where? When you are abusing me, I don't have brains. Ah. Me, I don't have brains. You have the By money, the way, but your stop head is empty. My blender. I will slap you, Gwen. Hey, so you want to beat me, Victor? <laughs> Victor wants to beat me! <laughs> oh, Victor wants to beat me! Come on, help me! But I don't make noise for my blender. <laughs> this is ours! You can't say your blender! <laughs> Victor wants to beat me! Barbara, can you imagine? What, what is happening? <laughs> what is wrong? Who wants to beat me? He wants to beat me! Uh, I, uh, wait, I, let me just... Okay, <laughs> You guys, okay, what is the me. issue? I am Victor. here. Beat me. What's happening here? Leave him here? to beat me. Come James. and beat me, oh, wait, Victor. What's happening here? Come and beat no, no. me. I am here. Young lady. Beat me. Come and beat me. Come and beat me. I am here. But Barbara, the you're problem, the one bringing the problem social stress me, here. I have been forgiving this woman. <laughs> she's very short-tempered. One, two, three. So she's far you're not short-tempered who wanted to beat me. Leave him to beat me. Bring him here. Of that nonsense of calling Chairman, us for leave no him reason. to beat me and I show Barbara, him from I think they will beat you. Uh, he, let him oh, beat sure. me. What's the problem here? Wait, this thing has be made a squirrel since There's morning. There's no problem. There's no problem. Yeah, there is you... a very big problem you don't want to, to discuss. Barbara, say. next time, don't cry for nonsense. Ah, Chairman, us what here. did you say? Why did you say hey, like hey. that? Madam, you don't know the issues in our home. You better leave. Did we call you? You're causing social go, stress in this society. In this Barbara. <laughs> Let me tell her okay, okay. she's not the wife in this okay, home. Okay. I'm seeing what okay. I go through. Yes, I see. Man, eh? So what's the issue here? I, I was passing on Kampala Road, okay? I said, ah, what a nice uh, second-hand blender, okay? No. Let me buy nice. it for my wife, yes. okay? I bought the blender with my money. No. I am an engineer, okay? I went to school. I am busy trying but to also assemble. Th Wait. I am assembling Let me my also blender. tell him what I started. She wants to assemble for her. She knows more about S my blender. So the problem, the problem is the blender. Yes, no, it has... the problem is she doesn't want me to put my blender the way I want. How many minutes see, do you use to see? To the blender has a manual. Yes, Quiet. it has a manual. You manu get yes. first come. But as I was telling you, it has a manual. But this is my blender, okay? <laughs> But yeah. chairman. So See. me, I decide how See. I want my blender. Barbara. But it's me who the makes The blender has a manual. Get this. Step one. Get this. Put it here. Please Let him me. first put also. Barbara. The day I will slap out your teeth, Come my friend. Come slap <laughs> Barbara. You do it. The chairman is telling Pull me, out can that you and put it there and assemble the so blender. So far you cannot put, put it. But Barbara, why, putting, do, why can't you be submissive? Wait. I tell because madam, keep quiet. Yeah. Pull out this and put it there. You also put. The, the I have, have put have this one. Her. Can't he put? That, this one goes here. I was telling you. You now put and receive. Yes, put it there. Good. Get, ah. get the cover. Ah. Get the cover. 
Put the cover and that is solved. First, we want to go to our homes. Yes. Oh. Are you seeing? This is what I told you. This is what I have been saying. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is easy. There is a manual to follow. The you don't have to quarrel. Put the detonator. Uh, don't destroy. Yes. You don't have to quarrel. Just follow the manual and put the thing right. Yes. You are making noise all over the village. All over the village. Please, apologize to your wife. <laughs> Excuse me, chairman. Victor, next time you get such simple issues, don't just call, call us. Me. You listen. Just call me. I have been seeing the way you look if at you my husband. Go! I have not called in a home. If where, you where? don't have brains, we hey, hey, Victor, you are Victor. My baby girl, don't stress me, boys. I'm sorry. Please. I'm sorry. also sorry. <laughs> In fact, today, today, I am the one blending. I, it is me blending the juice. Let's go and make a juice. Uh, yeah, go and make Please. juice. Baby girl, yeah. prepare those oranges. Yeah. This thing is easy. It is just a manual. And actually also you, why are you struggling? This is the money. You read your Bible and get that divine guidance. Hello? Can you hear me now? Okay. Well, you know... Uh I've preached in places without a microphone and I have found that my voice can speak to thousands because after all Jesus used to do it. So I don't see why I can't. So, but what a joy it is. Good morning and praise the Lord. It's a joy for us to be here uh, and thank you very much, uh, Chaplain and uh, your dude. You're, you say you're coolest, you're what? Ah, this love, love. <laughs> eh, between these two. Well, I must show you my own. I know she has already stolen this team, but I do have my beloved wife of over 38 years here, Canon Dr. Ruth Senyoni. Uh, so that is my wife who has been watching over me, and if I look good, it's her work. Do I? Oh, thank you. Uh huh. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you. It's good to see Bishop here. Thank you. Uh, nice to see you again in St. Francis. What a joy it is uh, for us to see you. But let me just introduce a few family members that are here, and I'm not so sure how many or who is here. But uh, if uh, some of our family members I do have here have noticed, Ambassador Henry Maega. That's. Uh, that's my brother, and he's your ambassador in Dubai. Then we also have, we call him governor. Uh, that is Mr. Timothy Sechirai. Uh, he works as a deputy director in Bank of Uganda. Are there any other family members who have come? Because we were kind of expecting there might be some others, but probably not. Okay, but... Uh, uh, we are glad to be here, and I pray that the Lord will speak to us. You are told what the topic is, and the topic is divine guidance through the word. What an amazing, amazing topic, I must say. Divine guidance through the word. So I'm going to ask that we pray, and then we'll dig in and start looking at this scripture, this, uh, the scriptures that were read for us. Dear loving and gracious Father, we thank you so much <clears throat> for this morning. You have called us to hear your voice and we pray that we will. We are unable to understand it except by the illumination of your Holy Spirit. And so I do ask, Father, speak to me so that you may speak through me. And whatever I may have prepared, which is not yours, set aside, that only your voice will be heard. I also pray that you'll help me to decrease 
so that only you shall increase. And may your Holy Spirit be amongst us and with us at this time to the glory and honor of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So divine guidance through the word. All of us are guided. In case you don't know, each of us is guided. The only question is what are you guided by? By what? What is it that is really guiding you? And if it is guiding you, where is it guiding you to? All of us are guided. I remember as a young man when I was in secondary school, I was guided by my peers. And before I knew it, my language had become filthy. So we are all guided, whether we like it or not. Something influences you in a certain direction. And you cannot say that you're not. And then on top of that, all of us are transformed by something. The least transformation that happens to you, that you actually know is happening in your body, is when age catches on. Many years ago, I started realizing that now it was harder for me, especially if it is steep stairs, to move facing forward. So you start moving like this. And you know what is telling you? It is telling you you are changing. <laughs> you are changing. When it is steep stairs, you have to be a lot more careful. So all of us are changing. The question is, what is changing you? And what is it changing you into? Let me begin by first of all looking at a passage by Paul as he reflects on the significance of God's word in our life. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14 to 17. And listen to what he says to Timothy. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, knowing those from whom you learned it. And how from infancy, you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. You hear that? That you have known the holy scriptures and those scriptures are able to make you wise for salvation. In fact, that's the purpose of scripture. If scripture does not lead you to salvation then the goal of scripture is not yet accomplished. It's not yet achieved. But he goes on to verse 16. And he makes that statement which shows us the highest regard of scripture. He says all scripture is God breathed. In other words, it's God's breath. And is useful for teaching for rebuking, for correcting, and training in righteousness. Now, all these are words that are in, if we were to put them in summary, are talking about you being guided. And he's saying that scripture guides you. It's the way that God guides you. And he completes that by saying, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Thoroughly equipped. In other words, friends, what Paul is saying to us and putting to us so candidly is that unless scripture is forming you, something else is forming you. Unless scripture is guiding you, something else is guiding you.
You know what an oncologist is? Oncologist. <laughs> I can see people asking each other. But you're university people. An oncologist are those medical doctors that take care of us with matters of cancer. Okay? People like my friend Dr. Rem and many others, those are oncologists. Okay? You go to an oncologist, the oncologist checks you because you have got some disturbance in your own body, checks you thoroughly, and then says you have cancer. Tell me, would you go away and say, I don't believe what the doctor has said? Yes, you may cross-check with others. It gets confirmed that they are saying that there is cancer. You have cancer. Or, oh, for example, if we are in the church here, and you are looking at all these pillars, and you are so confident, you are saying, ah, this is a safe house. But a structural engineer who has been inspecting the building comes around and he has seen cracks in places that endanger occupation. And the structural engineer whom you know very well, who is a professional and all that, stands up here and says, friends, you better go out of this building because it's going to collapse any time. What would you do? I'm sure you would start scampering. Those exits would be too narrow. Isn't it? Why do you believe these people? You believe them because you know that they have the authority to speak about the subject that they are talking about. Isn't it? That's the reason. I started out my career as a lecturer, right here, in the Department of Mathematics. I'm a mathematical statistician. But whatever I would say, students would teach, would, would take it, and they would regurgitate it to me as if what I'm speaking is actually true. <laughs> because they believed that what I was saying was true. I have a PhD in mathematical statistics. You have got to believe what I say. Because I have authority to speak about that subject. Now here is the point that I'm trying to make. We believe and do as these people say. The question is, what about when we are talking about God and he's speaking about our life? Right? When God is speaking about your life. And he speaks to us through the word. And he says things about you. Do you believe it? Or do you start then arguing with him as if you know better? Well, we are going to see a little bit more about that. You see, friends, we can only seek God's word. We can only read God's word and study God's word and meditate on God's word and memorize God's word if we believe that he's an authority in the subject he's speaking about. And I'm afraid most of us Christians don't. If I were to ask you a very simple question, which for which, which I don't want an answer, because I don't want to embarrass you, although I'm quite capable of doing that. How many of you read your Bibles before coming to church? Let me not look at you. You see, friends, the reason we do not read is because we do not actually believe in the authority of God's word about our life. I read from Amos chapter 6 this morning, and I left at 6. 
Oh, okay. We don't have to think about today. Maybe you woke up too late and all that. What about yesterday? What about the whole of last this past week? Have you been reading your Bible regularly? And I'm saying to you that the reason why many of us do not read the Bible is because we are not convinced he is an authority in what he's speaking about. The day we are convinced that the Bible is indeed speaking with authority, we shall read it regularly. We shall study it regularly. We shall meditate on it regularly. We shall memorize it because we take the Bible to be the truth. I'm sorry I must embarrass you about this one. As we were coming, my wife and I, and we had entered the university here. We live in Mukono, so we are villagers. But anyway, so we, were, we had entered the university and we saw some people walking up the hill and I said to her, I think some of those are going to church. Maybe, maybe not. And then I said to her, but I'm disappointed that many people no longer carry their Bibles. I know you have them on the phones. I know you have them on the phones. But I'm sorry I'm old-fashioned. I do also have it on the phone. But I'm very, very old-fashioned. When I say open the Bible, I want the Bible to be opened. I don't want Google to open the Bible for you. <laughs> the thing is, for me, that I'm concerned about is if you're not carrying your Bibles to church or if you are unable to open your Bibles in church, how can I be sure that you open them when you're away from church? How? It's because you don't believe in the authority. And the, let me tell you something else. The other thing, the other reason why we do not spend enough time in the scriptures, why we do not listen to God's word, is simply because we have no fear for God. We don't trust him. We have no fear for God. Now, the Bible is very clear again and again. It says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's how you are guided into wisdom. That's what he's saying. The fear of the Lord, it says again in Proverbs 1, 7, is the beginning of knowledge. That's what it says. And it's saying that if you are to, be, to have knowledge, if you want to be guided into knowledge, you must have the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is hatred of evil. It says in Proverbs 8, 13, because it is actually telling you you will be guided away from evil if you have the fear for God. Now listen. As I'm speaking to you today, if you say you fear God, and I hear a lot of this even in the newspapers. People who are cohabiting, they say that they are fearing the Lord. People who are looking for a man who fears the Lord and things like that. I hear a lot about the fear of the Lord, but let me just explain to you. If the fear of the Lord does not cause you to rethink how you are living, if you hear what the Bible is saying and you are not concerned about changing how you live, you have no fear for God. Forget it. Because the fear of God causes me to rethink. Am I doing the right thing? But we deceive ourselves. And we think we are deceiving God. The fear of the Lord, at least that fear that I have known since I came to Christ a few years ago in 1976 is when I came to Christ. I was a university student at the time at the University of Nairobi. And when I came to the Lord Jesus Christ, I understood what the fear of the Lord is. That when God says this is sin, I flee. When God says this is what I want you to do, I go for it. Listen, that's the reason why I left lecturing here. Because God said, go into ministry. And I went. There were many other voices. 
people who said they were they really wanted me to continue teaching in the department of mathematics because they wanted a believer who is a professor in mathematics well that will never be because god called me and he said go into preaching the gospel 1988 is when i last taught here 1987 1988 i walked out why because when you have the fear of god and he speaks you don't think twice. You follow his voice. So check your life. If in your life, the word of God speaks and you start arguing with it, you start deciding what you want to take and what you don't want to take, you have no fear for God. You will never read the Bible until you learn to fear the Lord either. You will never. So the Bible becomes just like, like another piece of literature. But this is God's voice. And he speaks to us. It's God's voice. Let me tell you, friends. When I look into the scriptures... As far as I am concerned, for me, the word of God is God's will expressed to me. But I know that not every Christian is convinced about that. I know that when I read God's word, I'm hearing his purpose for me. And I know that I have got to change my life. Because he is the authority about my life. He is. Look at what was happening in the skit here. They have a blender. They don't know how to use it. Can you imagine if the manufacturer had turned up? Would there be that argument? He would just tell them, this is what you do. This is what you do. This is what you do. And friends, that's what God says. That's what God is saying in the scriptures. When God speaks, some of us think that what he, God is doing is restrict us and deny us the pleasures of life. He's denying us to drink alcohol. Alcohol is so good. He's denying us to have sex whenever we want. And it's so nice. Yes, he knows God created sex. And he made sure it was very good. <laughs> he didn't make it bad. He made it, he made it very good. But in his word, he speaks and he says, this is how you are to use it. And for you, say, ah, ah, na ye, the God also. Don't you see that girl there? She looks really, really nice. And you're not marrying her? Others start cohabiting. And they think, ah, forget about the word. Listen, friends, I have lived long enough to tell you. There is one thing that is sure about scripture. It's like gravity. Gravity always pulls you down. If I let go of my Bible here, which is a precious Bible given to me by my professor in theological school. But if I let go, where will it fall? Will it fall up or down? To fall down. So it is with what God says. God created you like the manufacturer created that thing there. God knows exactly how you are to operate. He knows how he fitted us. That's what I have found in my own life. He knows how I should live with my wife. He knows how I should walk. It is his will, it is his purpose that makes everything right. The moment you try to fix it the wrong way, you will never use that blender. And like I say to you, I'm old enough to tell you, I have seen a lot of destroyed blenders. And I'm glad that here I'm speaking to people who are a little younger than me.
I'm just avoiding to say you are much younger than me. And I'm saying to you that every decision you're making, if you're not willing to really dig yourself in the scriptures and order your life according to the scriptures, there is one thing that is sure. You're preparing yourself for regrets. Friends, either you are led, you are guided by God's word, or you're going to be guided by something else. Some of us are guided by our own wisdom. Yeah. Our own wisdom. And we think, I know what to do. I've been living my life. I'm a consultant in my own life. And so you want to do things your own way. But if you are not following what God's word says, you are going to be in the dark. Well, the other thing that often happens is people being led by the world, by the world. And I'm afraid and I fear and I have said, we've discussed this, my wife and I. We grieve over the fact that sometimes, even as people in the church, when we see what the government is doing, we think that's how it should be done in the church. Why are we getting all the problems in Luero? Why? Why do we get those things? So we see what is happening in the world and we start thinking that that's how the church should also be governed. And then we are totally neglecting what God said in his word. And that grieves me. And so for me, when someone starts speaking that we are going to do this or that, I say, mm -hmm. can you please tell me what scripture says. That's what I want to hear. So friends, we are talking about divine guidance through the word. The passages that were read for us were two, one from Isaiah and another one from John chapter 10. I am going to start with chapter 10 of John and then I will flip over to Isaiah, and after I've made a couple of comments from there, I'll shut up. We read from John chapter 10, and I want to make one point which is very, very clear from, the, from John. And this is Jesus speaking. For those of you who may not have heard, let me just say, read, it, read a little bit of it. It says, truly, truly, and this is Jesus speaking. I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens, and listen, the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them and the sheep follow him. For they know, and I love that statement, for they know his voice. Listen to that. That's a, an amazing statement there. What John is actually trying to convince us is that God's word is the voice, the good voice of the good shepherd. That's what he's saying to us. It's the voice of the good shepherd. If you really want to know what God thinks, if you want to know what he wants for you, if you want to know his purpose for you, you must go back to the scriptures. I told you that's why I left this university, and I went and I became a vagabond preacher, an itinerant preacher all over the continent of Africa. And after that, then they asked me to go to Uganda Christian University, and I still had to go back and ask myself, Lord, is this where you want me to go? And as I was reading the scriptures and getting to understand, then the Lord said, go. In all the positions in my career, that's what has happened. I've had to listen, to hear what God says. I'm not saying everything, but I'm saying a little bit of it. Listen, friends. 
St. Augustine made an, an amazing statement. He said that the Holy Scriptures are our letters from home. They are our letters from home. During the time my relationship with my wife started, I was living abroad and I was there for like five years. And our relationship started. And in those days, there were no emails. <laughs> that you people are used to, no social media, no mobile phones. Because some of you think that they are already, they are eternal. They are not. <laughs> These things started in the mid-90s. Okay? But for us, we existed. <laughs> you get it? We existed. So we were just writing letters, letters that would go through the post and they would take anywhere between two weeks and one and a half months. Lo and behold, I would go and check in the mailbox and I would get a letter from my wife. What do you think I did? She was not my wife yet. She was the person that I, my world was revolving around that one. <laughs> and I would take that letter and I would read it. And after reading through it, and mind you, this would be like six pages. <laughs> eh? Because I was writing six pages three times a week, and I was also doing a PhD. <laughs> and after reading it and completing it, put it aside, then I would read it again. Sometimes I would read it like three times. Because it was a letter from home from a friend that I loved. I wanted to hear. That's why St. Augustine says the Holy Scriptures are our letters from home. But many of us are not concerned about reading. Studying. Meditating, memorizing this letter from home. We're not concerned. If I could do that with my wife, then of course she was a girlfriend or whatever you people like calling them. Why wouldn't I do it for this God who holds the eternity of my life? Why? Why? So we go back home, we cook food, we eat things, and we do what, and so on. But when it comes to the reading of scripture, we are slow. John says his sheep recognize his voice. They know his voice. You think if I'm facing this way and I hear people speaking and my wife is speaking, I will not be able to recognize that's my wife's voice? Because we've been talking and talking and talking and talking. I know her voice. If you are to know that voice, you better read it. You better study it. You better meditate on it. You better memorize it. That's the only way. I don't know any other way. Because God wants to speak to you. That's why he wrote a letter from home. But unfortunately, we don't know the voice. He speaks and we say, is that really God? No, I don't think it's God. Then you start arguing with his voice. You read it in the scriptures. And you hear what he's saying, not telling of lies. I don't think he understands my situation. That's because you don't know how much he loves you. You don't know how much he knows you. Jesus tells us that he's a caring shepherd. Caring. He cares for you. He's not going to do anything bad to you. <laughs> he talks about this other person. He who does not enter by the sheepfold by the door, but climbs. That one is a climber. Eh? Climbs in by another way. <laughs> they enter the sheepfold and they claim the sheep. Paul talks about that in Acts chapter 20, verse 29 and 30. 
You can read it for yourself. He calls them wolves. That for them they come to steal the sheep. Others who are inside the church, they come to steal the truth. The way I normally put it is I say, those wolves that come from outside eat the sheep. The wolves that come from inside the church eat the truth. That's how it works. They eat the truth. But how will you be able to recognize it's not the truth if you don't know his voice? How? You can never know. You hear that? And Jesus is saying, listen, I am the good shepherd. He emphasizes it in verses 10 and 11. He says, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. And then verse 11, he proclaims, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. That is the voice I want to hear. That is the voice I want to hear. Not every shepherd around, whether they call themselves pastors or they call themselves apostles or prophets or whatever, let them prophesy. But there is only one voice that I'm listening to. And that I only recognize that voice if I'm spending time in his word. If I'm not spending time in his word, you can be sure of one thing. When they say, oh, that is also in the Bible. Okay. That's what will happen. Moses tells us in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15 to 20, you read it for yourself. I'm not going to read everything, but let me just pick out a few things. Is this is what he says, Deuteronomy 30, verse 15 to 20. See, and this is God speaking, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. There is a choice. And he's saying, I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him. In other words, obey what he says and keep his commands. That will be life for you and prosperity. Not some quack praying for you to, be, to prosper. You can pray for yourself to prosper. Do you need someone else to pray for you? Yes, they can support you, but you can pray for yourself and then you work hard. Because even that God has given you. You don't have to go to a quack who promises you, you'll get a visa to the U.S. <laughs> I have traveled to the U.S. many times that I can tell you it's not heaven. But listen to what Moses now says, because I must not digress too much. He says, if I jump a little bit further, in verse 19 he says, I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Then God advises, he says, now choose life so that you and your children may live and that you may love the Lord your God, listen to his voice and hold fast to him. Now what is his voice? The voice of the good shepherd. He says, listen to that voice. Listen to that voice. Let it be your daily menu. Familiarize yourself to what the scriptures say. You should have an understanding, even if it is a general view to start with, from what is in Genesis right through up to Revelation. You should be able to understand what is it that God says. You need to be able, there must be some cognition of that voice of the Savior. That if he speaks and instead you say, oh, let me go to the pastor to hear what God is actually saying. Why don't you first spend some time in it? Yes, we can give you guidance. And God forbid that you end up landing in the hands of a wolf. Because they're also there. They will also give you guidance. If, especially if you're not spending your, your time in the scriptures. God has written his holy scriptures, which he breathed out, as I said, reading from the poor 
to Timothy. He breathed out his words to the, to the prophets, to the apostles, to people like Moses, and they were written for you. And you people are literate, but your literacy is as good as illiteracy. Forgive me if I'm tough, but I'm taking back my repentance. Because I'm just imagining if Jesus came here and he says, I gave you the scriptures. Why don't you read them? And he says this to the Pharisees in John chapter 5. You search the scriptures and you think that in them you have eternal life. But the scriptures talk about me. That's what he says. <laughs> because he's the one who gives life. This Jesus is saying, please listen to my voice. Listen to my voice. Listen to the voice of the good shepherd. Let me ask a question. How many of you have ever read Psalm 119? Psalm 119. All of it. All of it. If you know you have ever read the whole Psalm, just put up your hand straight. Chaplain, you see how many hands are down? But they will tell you they read the Bible. Now, Psalm 119 is all about God's word. Every verse in that psalm, every verse is talking about God's word and commending it to you. Let me just pull out a couple. I'll pull out verse 9 and verse 11, which is very applicable, especially to the youth. He says, how can a young man keep his way pure? How? And then he answers that question for himself. He says, by guarding it according to your word. And then in verse 11, he goes on and says, I have laid up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. In other words, when you put the word in your heart, when you are able to have that clear cognition of the voice of the good shepherd, you are able to understand how to escape sin. That's what he says. Verse 105 of Psalm 119. He says, your word is a lamp to my, for my feet, a light to my, to on, my, uh, on my path. In other words, if you do not have that lamp, if you don't have that light, then you're walking in darkness. You're walking in darkness. And I'm afraid that many of us Christians are actually walking in darkness. What a pity. What a pity. Someone put it very well and said, are you suffering from truth decay? You know, not truth decay, but truth decay. You hear that? Are you suffering from truth decay? And then he gives an advice and he says, brush up on your Bible. That's it. Brush up on your Bible. That Bible that you're not reading. If you're suffering, you know, we suffer from a tooth decay and you immediately run to the dentist. But you suffer from truth decay and you just keep on wallowing in your falsehoods and lies. I must go to Isaiah. And I will say a couple of things and then I will be done. Because Isaiah also has something to say about this. Oops, sorry. Now Isaiah chapter 55. And I will just read a few of those verses, not all of them. Oops. It hasn't disappeared from my Bible. Yes, I have found it. Isaiah 55, and you see, that is the sad thing that many of us, if I say Isaiah, you start with the New Testament opening. And that tells a lot. <laughs> when I say Jude, you go to, to Genesis, and you know, these people who translate the Bibles for us have spoiled us because they put uh, a table of contents. I wish they were not there. And woe unto us when, he start, when someone tells you, can you open in Nahum? They say, is there a book called Nahum? <laughs> Does it exist anywhere? 
Well, Isaiah 55 verse 9 says this, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. What exactly is he saying? That you, my dear, including me, of course, our thoughts, our ways are so puny. They are so vain. They are so useless. They do not come anywhere close. Because you are talking of the heavens <laughs> higher than the earth. Eh? Can you touch the heavens? You can't. And he's saying that God knows better about you than you know about yourself. We used to have a children's song years ago. My wife would know. Your ways are higher than mine. Your ways are higher than mine. Your ways are higher than mine. Much higher. And it goes on and on. Sorry, I didn't come to sing. But what Isaiah is saying to us is that God knows better about you than you know about yourself. God has greater wisdom than your wisdom. Your wisdom does not come anywhere close to that. Ask any medical doctor. Let us say we ask an ENT because an ENT deals, you may say, deals with little things like the ear, the nose, and the throat. Those look small. Ask them, do you know everything about the ear, the nose, and the throat? And if they are honest, they will say, mm -hmm. they may study for years and years and years. And the Bible is saying, his ways are higher than mine. That God knows better about you, about your situation. His wisdom and his ways, which are reflected in the scriptures, are the truth that we must read, that we must trust. They are better. I must move on quickly. Verses 10 and 11. He says, For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring, spring, bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. Listen. He's taking rain, he's taking snow, and he's comparing it to his word. He says, So shall my word be. That goes out from the mouth, it shall not return to me empty, but shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Who is speaking? It's God. It's the good shepherd. And he's saying to us, friends, that God is faithful to his word. What he says, he will do. I'm waiting for the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what I got saved for almost 48 years ago as a university student. And I'm waiting for the second coming. I have not yet seen it. But the Bible tells me that in, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, that he will come on the clouds, and then the dead, if I am dead, I will be raised. And then those who are still living will all be lifted up, and they will meet with the Lord in the, in the skies. And forever, and ever, and ever, and ever, we shall be with him. Listen, friends, I believe it. I believe it because of who says so. I believe it. That when God speaks, he's faithful to his word. He's faithful to his word. Nothing can change. Nothing can hinder his will. It does not matter what we think. His word is likened to rain and snow. 
Have you ever seen rain falling upward? No. Have you ever seen snow? Well, there is no snow in Uganda where we live here. But snow comes from up, down. It just comes down. And he's saying that God is faithful to, the, to his word. That once he speaks, his word shall not return to him empty. But it shall accomplish everything that he has said it should go and accomplish. That's what his word does. So what I'm saying to you, my dear friends, is that this voice of the good shepherd is worthy of your trust. This voice of the shepherd is worthy of you listening to it. Now, as I conclude, because I must shut up really, I think I've talked too much. I want to ask, I want to see people here who are saying for me, from today, I'm committed. Maybe you'll join a group. I understand there is even Bible study fellowship here. There, is, there are all sorts of opportunities that are given to you as believers. For me, when I came to Christ, I fell in the hands of the navigators. Oh, thank God for that. I understand there is even life ministry. But even if you don't go that far, the church itself organizes cell groups for you. But how many people are part of the cell groups to read the scriptures? So I'm saying to you, how many? And this one, I'm going to ask for hands to go up. You are saying from today, and I want the chaplain to see this, I'm determined, I'm going to take God's word seriously, and I'm going to dig in. I'm going to read it. I have read this Bible from cover to cover, and I can tell you it's indeed a letter and a love letter. Actually, for me, I usually add the word love letter from home. So if you are determined, just put up your hand and you say yes. From today, I'm seriously going to be reading, studying, meditating, memorizing the scriptures. Chaplain, you see? Now, it's up to the chaplain to give you guidance. But let us end here. Let me shut up. And may God bless you. Shall we bow down our heads in response to this message? Speak to your God and make a commitment to God and pray that He guides you through as you intentionally study His Word. Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing your Word to be clearly explained to us this morning. Please forgive us when we have taken your word for granted. Forgive us when we have not studied our Bibles. Forgive us when we have not consulted you. Please have mercy. This day forth, we continue to resolve that we shall be Bible students. We shall feed on your word, dive deep in your word, that your word will influence us and cause us to make right decisions, knowing that guidance, true guidance, comes from you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone says. A big hand clap to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And let's appreciate the preacher. Thank you so much, Canon, for bringing God's word to us. It's time for us to... We give cheerfully. Why? Because God loves a cheerful giver. Let's receive the choir. After the general giving, we shall receive those that came prepared with special thanksgiving. And thereafter, we shall bring the notices.
giving. Shall we please stand up? There's been a delay there, but we shall stand up and then uh, we shall receive those that came prepared with special thanksgiving. Choir. Those that came prepared with special thanksgiving. of us who may be seated. Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to come before you and express our hearts of gratitude. Thank you for allowing us to worship you because this is the time to worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, you have provided. We have taken from what is yours and brought back to you. Receive the offering, O God, that we have brought in honor of you. Lord, use it, grow it, and multiply it, O oh God, that your gospel and your work will be done in St. Francis and through St. Francis. Father, we thank you that your children have been able to worship you with their giving. Bless them for that. And for those that were unable to do so, we pray that you'll continue to provide for them so that they will give with generous hearts. We as well thank you for these that have also, in addition to their offertory, have come to say thank you because of the many things that you have done. Indeed, see what you have done in their lives. Many called upon you, and Lord, you intervened. If it had not been you on their side, the enemy would have swallowed them. Many believed you for employment, and you provided one to say thank you. Many believed you for the open doors, and you have done so. Many cried to you in their desperate moments, and Lord, you intervened. We want to say thank you. You are good and your mercies endure forever. For you have done marvelous things and they are so wonderful to us and before us. So I want to say thank you. Receive the offer tree. Receive the thanksgiving sacrifice we've brought to you. Receive seed offering. Every kind of offering we've brought to you. Our tithes, receive them. That your glory and honor will be magnified. To you be the praise, glory and honor. Maybe you're here and you're trusting God for something so that you too will come and thank God. Just mention that burden you have. Lord, in your mercy, and may the grace and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. To good day, tender is yes, who, yes, who. Big 
hand clap to our God and our Father. I have some few notices for us. We shall do this very quickly. God help us. And we want to thank God for what he has done here and through St. Francis Chapel. In the course of the week, we had the minister's day of prayer. Do we have ministers in the presence of God? You are a council member, choir, usher. Please just stand up. You are a minister in church. Just stand up. Just stand up. All ministers in your different capacity. Maybe cell leader, um, choir, usher, staff member. Let's appreciate these men and women. Thank you. God bless you. It's because of God's mercy that we have this ministry, so we don't take this for granted. We shall be always be having two ministers' day of prayer in the year in Jan and July, as long as we are together, as long as I'm serving with you. And uh, just to let us know, Scripture tells us, can two walk together unless they agree? Amos 3, 3. So, um, we had a great time on uh, Friday with the ministers. For those that missed, that wasn't good manners. For the ministers that missed, but we still love you, okay? Make sure you don't miss next time. Because this is God's work and we want to do it his way. We want to pray and trust him to guide us. It was a great time. We were here with Reverend Jeffu, my friend. And indeed, God spoke to us. Please, next time when we announce, make sure you come. Because your leaders and anointing flows from, from the top. Praise the Lord. Great. Just a few notices to remind us that uh, Sunday 18th, we'll be having baptism. Please feel free to come and register a baby or an adult that you want to be baptized. And to let you know that every um, Friday, we have night of prayer, virtual or physical. This Friday, what are we having? Physical night of prayer. Please ask your neighbor, are you coming? Ask your neighbor if they're going to come. We'll be happy to see you all. This month has been a month of prayer and fasting. We are still doing that until the end of the month. We meet Monday, Tuesday, and Friday through the Zoom link, 5.30 to 6.30, and thereafter we break our fast. Maybe you haven't participated. Please join in and let us pray together. We are crowning the month as we continue to trust God to guide us. And just to remind us that we always have morning prayers and for us this year we decided to read the bible we are here monday to friday we read the bible and pray through the bible maybe if you're around do not hesitate come start the day with us and you'll definitely be blessed i'll ask them to please flash the giving we shall be announcing the givings for services but now i might not be able to read them because of time but help me flash them on the screen that's the detail for giving but let's know our collections. As you flash them, I will invite Uncle Peter to please come because he has an announcement to make to us. Praise the Lord. Let's receive our people's word. In. Thank you and praise the Lord. What a wonderful time in the presence of God. As is the posture for many who have stood here, I'll also introduce my wife. Yes, my rainbow, um, Catherine Chiza. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm going to make some quick announcements. Number one, how, how many of us are aware of a congregation at Cabanyoro? How many of us are aware that there's St. Francis Chapel Cabanyoro? How many of us know where Cabanyoro is? Right? Gaza Road, extend a bit ahead, you will find Cabanyoro. It's actually an establishment of Macquarie University, um, and we have a congregation. To announce, and I'm giving you an initial announcement, we are going to build a sanctuary there this year. So pray for us as we put together all the arrangements to extend St. Francis Chapel to Cabanero. And Cabanero is your church as well. I will keep you updated. The next issue is to do with the parking. Yesterday, I attended marriage Thanksgiving and I had to pay 10,000 shillings to exit. 
Makerere University. How many of us uh, celebrated, celebrate that experience? Now, how many of us love giving? The last giving at the gate, it's a joyful thing. The Bible says, give cheerfully. How many of us? Right? Well, it is becoming a problem. It's becoming a problem, especially that we come to worship and we feel like we are charged for coming to worship. We have taken up this issue with the administration of Makerere. What I'm asking from you is to pray for us and that we get favor and that we come up with a solution so that people come to church without worrying about how much they are going to pay for parking. That is for car owners. Pedestrians, I don't think you are affected. Okay? Okay? Right. And I want to talk about some transfers in, in, the, ch in the chapel. I want to invite Reverend Geoffrey Eluk. Quickly, please come. Come on, give him a hand cup of prayer. <laughs> now, receive this with grace. Because transfer means moving, yeah? Reverend Geoffrey Eluk has been transferred to St. Stephen Sambia. Effective first February. I want us to appreciate and bless and pray for him in the course of this process. Thank you, Reverend Geoffrey Luke. We appreciate your ministry and we will bless you more appropriately at a later time. These things are normal. The transfers are very what? Normal. I'm giving you more information. Thank you, Reverend. You may have your seat. Reverend Wilfred Tusubira, how many of us know him? He ministers at Kabanyoro. He's also being transferred to Church of the Resurrection, Bugolo V. Yes, we thank God for him and for his work in St. Francis Chapel. And he's being transferred, I believe, for, a, for more of God's work in his kingdom. So pray for him as well. And as he goes away, I want to introduce to you, there's a new face right amongst us. I want to introduce to you Reverend Bennett Ariho. Please come forward. I'll ask the wife to come. Let me come. He is our new, new do you call it new catch? Yes. <laughs> but Please he, come, Mrs. Ariho, come. Mrs. Ariho is also here. Oh, welcome, welcome. This is the new addition to St. Francis Chapel. You are most, most welcome. Okay. Yes, and we're just gonna do this. Flowers, come on, flowers. Yes, receive the flowers. We, 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 we thank God for your addition to us and pray for your ministry going forward in St. Francis Chapel. God bless you. And then Reverend Irene Kankwasa is moving to Cabanyoro. Mm. To replace Reverend Tusubira. Yes, we thank God in all times. We thank God. Thank you for listening. That's, those are the few announcements, and some of us are still here. God bless you. Let's appreciate Uncle Peter. Thank you so much. He's your people's word and praise the Lord. We had a wonderful time yesterday, the marriage and your thanksgiving. It was great. So let's continue to pray for the marriage ministry in our midst. Praise the Lord. Shall we please all stand up to our feet? I will invite Bishop David to give us a blessing, please. And then the choir will lead us in the last song. But before he gives the blessing, I'll do the prayer for the transfers and then you'll give the blessing. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the transfer process. Lord, it's your work. It is your doing. This is your church and you've promised to build your church. So build your church and use us as you so desire. We commit Reverend Geoffrey as he goes to St. Stephen in Zambia. Effective first, babe, please go ahead of him. We as well bring Reverend Tusubira as he goes to 
Ogorobi, first match, we pray you go ahead of him. We pray for Reverend Irene. He is still with us, but uh, designated at Cabanyoro, first Feb. We pray that you go before her. We thank you for Reverend Ariho and the wife who have joined us. We pray that you bless them and let your Holy Spirit rest upon them as they serve in our midst. In Jesus' name. Mudro, we thank you for the time we have been together, for the time we have worshipped you, and for the time of listening to your word. May your Holy Spirit, who dwells in us, continue keeping us and guiding us to read and understand your word, so that our thoughts and our strength may be guided by the scripture. And now the peace of God, which is greater, than we can understand. Keep your hearts and the minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his son Jesus Christ who is our savior. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you brothers and sisters. Go with you and remain with us all now and forevermore. Amen. We go in the world to love and to serve the Lord. Please thank your neighbor for leading us. The choir will lead us in at least two verses as we go out and then we start the next service. Let's appreciate the choir for the wonderful time.